Staying with us here on Morning Live now, as promised, this interview uh, about uh, short-term insurance. And most of us are familiar with random text messages and cold calls from insurance companies. And many often offering a debt protection designed to cancel, suspend or take over outstanding debt in the event of death, disability or retrenchment. Now, during this lockdown period, banks are offering customers debt relief holidays. But... What about people who are already covered by credit insurance? And many of us may not even be aware of such a benefit or even be aware of the fact that we have that in place. But uh, with businesses closed or suspended and with people losing their jobs in certain instances or just being unsure if your job will still be there post the lockdown, just how are people expected to manage their debt? And uh, should you be rushing off to your bank to check if you have credit insurance insurance, which is designed to pay your premiums for up to 12 months if you're not receiving an income. Listen to this interview before you make that call. Our guest this morning is Edith Teixeira McKinnon, who is the CEO in the office of the Ombudsman for Short-Term Insurance. And uh, she joins us now um, via Skype uh, or on the line uh, to tell us more about this particular situation. Edith, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you. So let's just start off by gauging the sort of complaints that your office has started seeing in relation to COVID-19 cases. So in the last two weeks, we've seen an increase in the number of complaints pertaining to travel insurance and obviously the cancellation of trips and flights and as well as a lot of commercial complaints relating to business interruption, loss of profits, and even burglaries at premises that have started to close. So with all of this going on at the moment, um, what people are, of course, concerned about is what's going to happen uh, post this lockdown period and just how speedily uh, the insurers will be able to deal with all of these complaints and cases that may come before them. Um, as the ombud from the ombuds office, uh, you know, what are the sort of rules and regulations in place with regard to turnaround time, for example? So insurers should all have in place a business continuity plan so as not to cause delays um, both in assessing claims as well as paying out those claims that they have accepted liability on. You know, if this is unavoidable, for example, assessors going out to do assessments at home or which cannot now happen in lockdown, then insurers need to communicate with their policyholders in order to manage expectations. Now, Edith, um, just looking at what is currently happening, and one can understand the uncertainty and the anxiety that so many people are grappling with at the moment, given this lockdown, and many of the employers themselves not too sure what to do, or uh, given the loss of income that they are suffering at the moment, may not be able to pay their employees. But then you have certain debt obligations, like, for example, a home loan or, uh, you know, other um, obligations that may be in place. If we take a home loan as an example, doesn't that contract come with debt security or is that something that is optional? It, it's usually optional. We, on the short-term or non-life side, what we see is some um, purchases being made by individuals where they've included credit life on a short-term license, which covers you, for example, if you purchase a motor vehicle or appliances, something more short-term than on a bond or on a life policy, and it covers you in the event that you are incapacitated uh, for whatever reason or you're actually unable to work, such as in a lockdown situation, and then those installments get paid for a certain period by the insurer. What people forget is that they have this cover in place because these items are purchased on credit through a higher purchase agreement. It is included sometimes in um, the installment that gets paid, people forget. And what we recommend is that people go and check either um, in their documents, and if they can't find those documents, to check with their financiers to make sure that they're not actually paying a premium that covers them, at least for a limited period, is able to assist them financially to maintain those installments.
So, indeed, what's interesting at the moment is given that that option, as you say, uh, which is usually available with most higher purchase agreements, given that that option may exist for many, why is it then that the banks and their immediate response uh, to this COVID-19 lockdown uh, seems to have been to encourage a debt holiday instead of, you know, utilizing these funds as the first option? Look, I can't speak on behalf of banks um, or any other finance institution. I think in this um, it, it, this, what we're going through now is very uncertain times, and sometimes it's in, in a state of panic that consumers will um, come to our office before they've even gone to the insurer to inquire about some form of relief. And here I'm talking about the payment of premiums. Um, they come to the ombudsman. We then suggest that they speak to their insurer. Some of them don't want to go back to an insurer. They want to lodge a complaint. Um, I think there's a lot of panic that's happening and fear and insure, insured the consumer need to um, also realize that a, an insurance policy, a short-term insurance policy, is there to cover you in the event of an actual loss. So you cannot lodge a claim prior to actually having suffered a loss because it's there to compensate you for a loss. On the other hand, what we're seeing is insurers saying to people that phone them, their consumers, no, you're not covered. For example, business interruption or loss of profits on a commercial policy. There are brokers. We've already received complaints from consumers saying, I phoned my broker, I phoned my insurer, I was told I'm not covered. Um, that, that also shouldn't be happening because each claim needs to be assessed on its own merits. And when there is an actual loss and when a claim has been submitted in terms of TCF, treating customers fairly, which is part of the regulations, Attached to the Insurance Act, you've got to, as an insurer, assess every single claim on its own merits um, and take the time to investigate these matters fully. They shouldn't be giving advice like that on the phone either. So there's a combination of things that are not being done correctly, um, and, and we can understand. It's understandable people are acting from fear. They don't know what is going to happen with their businesses. Um, so it's it just to take a little bit of time to wait until the loss occurs and then you submit a claim. Um, that's the advice that I can give. So, and I take the point uh, that you cannot speak on behalf of anybody um, other than, you know, your office and uh, what you're obligated to respond to. However, if you take insurance and, and uh, looking at the point that you've just made, it would seem as though insurers uh, would uh, look for the loophole that would absolve them from actually honoring uh, many of these claims. Hence, the responses that people have been receiving and the complaints that have been coming to your office. But is there any obligation on the insurer uh, to actually perhaps alert people, given that these are uncharted waters, we've never been in this type of situation before, isn't there any obligation to alert people that they need to look at certain uh, a, a cover that they may not be aware of having that they actually do have in place, that sort of thing? You know, um, it's not really for an insurer to do that. It's more for the consumer who is perhaps um, fearing the, you know, the experience and fearing the loss that's coming to actually make an inquiry with the broker to say, where in terms of my policy may I submit a claim? Do I possibly have cover? What am I covered for? What am I not? You know, these are, these are things that are supposed to have been highlighted to a customer right up front when taking out the policy and throughout the life of a policy, especially on the commercial um, in the commercial arena where you have a broker. In most cases, there are brokers who are there to advise you. So the consumer needs to also play a part and uh, make inquiries with their broker and with their insurer to find out what exactly am I covered for, what am I not, what contingency plans do I have to put in place as well. So as we stated right at the onset, people may not be aware of the security blanket that they may have on their debt, including uh, smaller credit facilities such as credit cards. So what are some of the other possible debts that people should start scrutinizing at this point uh, in their credit commitment contracts? I can only talk from a short-term um, perspective, and I've already highlighted um, 
in the types of um, contracts that people need to look at, a motor vehicle that is um, on lease, it's been um, taken out or purchased on a higher co- um, agreement, appliances, that's the arena that we deal with. Beyond that, I cannot really comment. And I think maybe life, the life ombud could shed some light on that and also the banking ombudsman. So just finally, Edith, in, in what way does this lockdown situation throw the spotlight on insurance contracts? You know, what can people take as a lesson from what's happening in this crisis? I think the most important lesson is just as insurers need to communicate with their policyholders to manage expectations, so too do consumers need to um, communicate with their insurers, especially with regard to the difficulty in paying premiums perhaps at this time. Don't just not pay the premium. Be in communication with your insurer. Find out what can be done in order to alleviate um, the crisis of not having any cover. Perhaps negotiate with the insurer to try and get the premium reduced in some um, respect. Just not to be without cover is creating even more of a risk for you as an individual and also for you as um, a company. So my um, advice would be to keep in communication with um, your insurer to make sure that they can communicate with them so that they can come up with plans, contingency plans, to try and prevent the lapsing of policies in this time. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, Edith uh, Tekshera McKinnon, who is the CEO in the Office of the Ombudsman for Short-Term Insurance, helping us to better understand if one may or may not be covered in the event of disasters such as COVID-19. And you heard Edith say there, um, especially when it comes to higher purchase agreements, then usually there is uh, that uh, credit insurance that you usually sign up for that's included in your premium. So what you may want to do at this point is just go and take a look at all your contracts to see whether you in fact have that sort of cover in place. And if you do, then perhaps you could wait on uh, the payment holidays that the banks are offering at that stage.